Hello, my name is Michael O'Keefe, aka The Movie List. If you enjoyed this interview and want to hear more top-notch film industry conversations, please press the thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell to stay in the know. I really responded to the first episode of The Book of Boba Fett titled Stranger in a Strange Land, because I feel like so far this whole Mandoverse, or simply the vision of Star Wars from director John Favreau, has a big kung fu vibe going. No, I'm not talking about the genre of film, I'm talking about the David Carradine show. First with the emphasis on the Drifter, with loads of side missions that are seen in The Mandalorian, and now the flashback structure is seen in this episode. In the show Kung Fu, we would see Kane, played by David Carradine, go about the business of the episode, but a flashback for the Shaolin Temple would come with an applicable lesson to the episode scenario then being applied. I love the flashback structure in this episode, and I think that fans who do not believe it went bigger are missing the point that this is a setup for an adventure, plus there is plenty of action to be seen here. We get a setup of a less callous Fett who aspires to be a fair crime lord, but everything we see suggests that uh, that is a noble yet impossible task, and that is contrasted with the events shown directly after Return of the Jedi, showing Boba get, getting back on his feet. I love seeing the torture chamber droid from Return of the Jedi tell Boba how it is. The Sarlacc Pit escape was the raw simplicity that it was required to be. And the Goro or Machamp looking beast at the end was cool. But the mission past plus respect moment that followed was way cool. Chapter 2 of the Book of Boba Fett titled The Tribes of Tatooine is notably longer than Chapter 1. And so at first I thought of the massive crate Dragon episode of The Mandalorian. But the episodes are really quite different. In the weeks leading up to the Book of Boba Fett... I thought it would lack something more emotional than The Mandalorian, which might trip it up. But to be honest, now I think it rather does not lack sensitivity, but is simply more pliable. The episode is mainly a flashback to the Tusken Raider days of Boba Fett's life after Return of the Jedi. And I thought it was very spiritual, as well as a beautiful take on the Outlander's embrace of an indigenous or extremely different culture. Think of movies like Lawrence of Arabia or Dances with Wolves. But to be honest, while the trope has intrigued me in the past, I used to not really like it, finding it forced in those mentioned Hollywood movies, or just not particularly landing with my subjective viewing experience. Anytime we see the huts, this is the first time in the post-Mando time setting, it's going to be a strong vibe for me, and I appreciated the badass vibe from the toughest nails looking Wookiee named Black Chrysanthemum too. The last few scenes in this episode where Boba becomes a part of the tribe is quite special, especially since the actor who plays Boba Fett, Tamura Morrison, is himself a New Zealand Islander, who adds this material a lot better, at least in part, because of his background. Okay, so the last episode was really quite a wonderful watch, and things take a bump in quality in the third episode of the show, titled The Streets of Mas Espa. Despite there being cool things here, it's a disappointment. Danny Trejo as the Raincore trainer is ridiculously cool. I love that Robert Rodriguez finally brought Machete to space, since we never got that third movie in that series, and his character is quite wise. He's not some wise-cracking distraction. I also like seeing the twin huts again, but found it confusing that they bent the knee in the end. It turns out that the Pike Syndicate is here to claim Tatooine, and I do not understand how they were not privy to that in the last episode. Also, that intimidating Wookiee bounty hunter introduced in the last episode named Black Chrysanthemum has a very strange logical apply to him in the scenes here. Most problematically, he lands low... He lands blows on Boba Fett that would most certainly cripple him. He certainly would have killed one of those Gamorrean guards. It is weird that the lame and out of place on Tatooine, youthful cyborg gang, beat up Black Rosanthian so easily, then Boba Fett sets him free. Boba Fett at this point is just being a weak man. He is developed already as likable, and him constantly bending the knee is getting annoying at this point of the story. One more thing, that chase scene was quite underwhelming. With the fourth episode, we get some of the most exciting flashback scenes, and know they will not be there for the next three episodes, since Boba Fett has entirely healed his wounds from the Sarlacc Pit through his time in the Bank to Tank. The flashbacks show how Boba Fett met and then saved Fennec Shane from the events in The Mandalorian Season 1, how they team up to get Boba's Fire Spray model spaceship, formerly known as the Slave One, and even a very tense scene featuring a return to the Sarlacc Pit. I enjoyed this stuff. The second episode still had the best flashback scenes, in my view. But this is a close second place. It is more fun action, certainly, but less spiritually fulfilling. But that's me, maybe not you as a viewer. In the later period scenes, we get lots of rewarding scenes. 
like with Black Chrysanthemum doing the trademark Wookiee move of ripping an arm out out of a Trandoshan socket, then after nearly killing Boba Fett, he gets hired by him. Boba Fett continues to be a weak crime boss when he asks other key criminals to stay neutral in this beef with the Pike Syndicate, which is perhaps the most frustrating thing about this season. He is so lame as a leader. He does not pick and choose who he's going to be nice to. He just can be assumed to always be nice, which at this point is a frustrating part of the show. Perhaps it is the Disney factor. But with, but with all that said, those iconic notes played on the flute will get Mando fans very excited for what is to come. Maybe it is a bad sign for the direction that Disney has taken with the character Boba Fett that the episode titled Return of the Mandalorian is the best episode so far since Boba Fett is not seen for a single shot. We see a bunch of bulldog-looking aliens get slaughtered on a city in space, struggles with the dark saber, the return of the armorer, and the chunky Mandalorian from season one. We get laughs on Tatooine and lots of Phantom, Men Phantom Menace nostalgia porn. This even tops the beautiful indigenous parallels of episode two, and I believe a lot of that works from the intensity of the opening, to the lore spoke from the armorer, to then the trademark Star Wars good feeling that follows in a sequence. My theory on Mando not being able to go with the blade and getting his ass kicked using the Darksaber is that he is an emotional cripple after losing his little green buddy, so he needs him to be spiritually aligned to do what is required of him. The Mandalorian just has so much more emotional depth than Boba Fett, and this is a great setup for both the next episode as well as season three of the show that gets it all off. There is so much to chew on here. I am excited to pick up with Boba, but I feel like the last episode of the season is going to merely set up th more things for more shows instead of resolve much of the notable issues with his own character set up by the creators. The sixth episode is called From the Desert Comes a Stranger, and it is a real tearjerker. The deep fake Luke Skywalker is looking a lot better in this episode than what we saw in The Mandalorian, and there are other legendary characters who make an appearance here. Seeing Ahsoka Tano with Luke is really cool, just like your father was a neat line. It's weird to see them together for the first time, and they already have this established history. And we get another wonderful Clone Wars character come to the live action, none other than Cad Bane. He looks like Lee Van Cleef in Star Wars in his scene, which is the closest any Star Wars moment has felt like a Western, which I would say is an awesome thing. It reminded me of a skinny Western like Day of Anger, The Grand Duel, or Death Rides a Horse. His showdown with Cobb Vanth, to me, is essentially Cab as Mando shooting Cobb as Luke over Grogu, the heart of new Star Wars. That was how I interpreted that scene, as well as the episode title, From the Desert Comes a Stranger. Grogu has a lot of great moments here, from attempting to eat a one-eyed frog to the Order 66 flashback, to the last scene where the decision is not shown, whether he goes for the Beskar chainlink armor, representing a life with Mando, or Yoda's lightsaber representing more training from Luke. I was thrilled to see the parallels from that scene with Lone Wolf and Cub's sort of vengeance, when the same shot composition is used, which was tradition for Japanese boys to pick between manhood and childhood. The last episode of season one of the Book of Boba Fett is titled In the Name of Honor. It has lots of big blockbuster spectacle, so don't expect the layered on you of an episode with deep revelations or bigger emotions. Personally, I don't mind that it was what it was. Episodes 5 and 6 took us to set up Mando Season 3, and everything was basically said and done in the first four episodes, making us wait for a conclusion. The story was Boba desired to be a different kind of leader. The conditions on the ground certainly set that up to failure, then guns blasted in the end with lots of big budget action with not much else to say. The internet was buzzing that the Pikes might have been controlled by Crimson Dawn or the Dark Side of the Force, but there were just some greedy fish faces and Boba was in the way, but the good bad guy conquered. Seeing Grogu jump at Din was adorable. Cad Bane channeling Lee Van Cleef was neat for me. And Bobo riding his Rancor was a blast to watch. It is also my opinion that the reveal that Cobb Vanth is still alive is a setup for Rangers of the New Republic. In the end, I will say that this show lacks the significance of the Mandalorian, but a season two would be cool about mine. But perhaps there will be too many shows like this that are really good but lack greatness, therefore diminishing Star Wars.